Chavez is one of the toughest fighters you'll ever see. Especially since Chavez has come so far without ever tasting defeat. I think that Julio Cesar Chavez might be the best kept secret in boxing. Mexican style. To the boxing fandom, it conjures images of a swarming pressure fighter with a mean left hook. He faces possibly the hardest hitting lightweight in the division. It wasn't always this way. With Mexico producing brilliant fighters of many styles. One right hand off a of one two by the right. De La Hoya can finish. There's the second knockdown. The world has only one man to thank for this massive shift in perception. Julio Cesar Chavez grew up in a family of 11 in an abandoned rail car. At age 16, he leaves home, a pair of gloves and a rail ticket to Tijuana. With a dream to give his mother a house and a work ethic that would change the way the world saw Mexican boxing. Chavez fought at a frenetic pace, both in the ring and in terms of his career. In his three years and two months as a pro, Chavez had rung up a 43-0 record with 36 knockouts. He fought and won by knockout every single month. It was fight or go hungry. Julio Cesar Chavez's incredible ring record has secured his place in boxing history. He gets a crack at the vacant lightweight title. His opponent was fellow Mexican Mario Martinez. Martinez was also on a similar tear and with a similar style to Chavez. The Mexican fan base knew a great fight was in the making. The fight was held in the Olympic Auditorium in LA. It may have gone off three days early, but it was the finest fireworks display Mexico could produce for Independence Day. They stuck to each other like cold rice. Chavez delivers a clinic of infighting. which was mercifully called off after eight. There was a palpable buzz around Chavez, who soon made his debut on American television against the respected Black Mamba from Michigan, Roger Mayweather. Floyd's uncle and future trainer was a renowned puncher with a lethal right hand. Chavez put the pressure and cut off his escape routes like a Mexican mongoose. Roger realized he couldn't run from this creature, tried his best to hold his ground with skill and to earn some respect. Chavez walked through it and finished it quickly. The two would meet a second time both would land their best shots once again. Roger found that there was nothing he could do to discourage the stoic Mexican swarmer. And Mayweather suddenly is not fighting back anymore. It's very rare the kind of willpower you see in Chavez combined with his skills. Chavez finished him in 10. 
Cesar Chavez. Chavez's next big debut came at Madison Square Garden against lightly regarded Refugio Rojas. Chavez decided to put on a show. It was a vulgar display of technical skill. Chavez landed about a dozen straight liver shots. But Rojas was as brave a man as I have ever seen. Brave and durable, however, can be mutually exclusive. It was a mismatch mercifully ended quickly. Chavez racks up eight defenses of the 130-pound title and makes the jump to challenge at 135. He took on Puerto Rican puncher Edwin Rosario. Rosario thought he could stand and trade with Chavez. He banked on body weight and a big punch to overwhelm him. Chavez delivered a clinic of cold, calculated inside fighting. Broke him down over the distance. What devolved into a career-altering beating that went on far longer than it needed to. The marquee performance of Julio Cesar Chavez came in 1990. His opponent was Meldrick Taylor, a standout of the legendary 1984 Olympic team. The greatest little fight money can buy, about between two extraordinarily talented undefeated champions whose styles seem to be perfect foils for one another. If ever there was a reason for great expectations, this is it. He may look good doing it. He is doing exactly what his corner wanted to do. Meldrick fought his way to challenge Chavez for his titles at 140 pounds. It was a brilliant fight. It could be that an old cut has been reopened here. He's bacon, terrified his fight with his tempo. Meldrick's unreal hand speed and combinations showed up the subtle but brutal bodywork Chavez did. It's incumbent on Taylor not to give Chavez an unnecessary chance to get back into this. Look at the speed of Meldrick Taylor's glory. As they brawled into the night, Chavez seemed to be down going into the final round. With just seconds left, Chavez drops Meldrick. With two seconds left on the clock, Chavez snatches victory from the jaws of defeat with the controversial KO. Meldrick protested and called for a rematch. The damage Chavez did in the first fight would change Taylor as a fighter forever afterward. This is one of the most unusual calls by a referee in the whole history of the sport. Cesar Chavez. This led to a clash with another proud Puerto Rican. 140-pound champion Hector Macho Camacho was known for his showy speed and southpaw skills. Chavez turned in a master class of ring cutting. Yeah, he is holding on. He's holding on inside very, very tight. 
Straight right hand that Chavez is throwing is going to be keen, and that left hook to the body. Camacho's fast feet couldn't carry him fast enough. As the fight wore on, Chavez's body attack and suffocating pressure wore Camacho down. He is in a survival mode. Yeah, what we're looking at is the, the beginning of the end. That's there by Chavez. Camacho trying just to get anything going, but he has no strength left. No flash to the oh, arms no. of taking a punch. Oh, it's about over. Nice cut over the right arm of Chavez. They're working on it. Here goes Chavez working on the body of Camacho. Watching for. Camacho barely made the bell and lost a landslide on all three cards. Did you think he was going to be this tough? I thought he was going to fight a proper fight. But he brain, he did have punches, he stood on me. I couldn't just keep him up. I kept him up, but he fought. What can I say? First time I fought a guy with that much courage that stood on me. Then for some reason, Greg Haugen decided to try and talk smack to Chavez. Called his opposition a bunch of cab drivers from Tijuana. Yeah, I see it was, you know, 60 of the guys he fought were just Tijuana cab drivers that my mother could have knocked out. And you know, but the other 20 guys or 22 guys are good fighters, so, you know, I'm not taking him light, uh, but I'm not taking him as he's unbeatable either with 82 and all. Chavez threatened to rip his head off. Is he gonna he knocking Elgin out isn't good enough. He wants to punish him. He wants to give him the worst time of his life and beat the out of him. In front of 130,000 fans in Mexico City, it almost came to that. The pride and nationalism of Mexico overflowing as 130,000 pour out their hearts. Gran campeón mexicano, Julio Cesar Chavez. His mouth is gross and very negative, and those are his good points. Chavez drops him on beautifully timed counters over Haugen's jab in the first. Chavez was well on the way to delivering on his promise when Joe Cortez decided he seen enough. And it's being stopped by Joe Cortez, it's all over. Well done, well done, Cortez, well done. Well, if he wanted to give him a beating, he did. And if Haugen wants to see Haugen, Haugen se lo merecía. Y es por eso con la castilla. Todo aquel que me insulta y me critique, lo castigo así. He's a hard puncher. He's a hell of a fighter. Uh, definitely one of the best fighters in the world. He proved it. Ahora sí reconoces que ya no peleas con tacitas. No tacitas. Well, they must have been tough taxi drivers. Chavez continues to rack up one of the longest win streaks in boxing history, maintaining not only an undefeated record of 86-0. He wasn't beating people, he was breaking them. He proved he could punch against Terence Ali, breaking down another 140 pounder with his usual stoic swagger. And the chance of Chavez from this crowd here Thomas. Chavez rocked him twice in the first round. With a right hand that Ali. And it was all downhill from there. Less than 30 seconds remaining, round five. Look out, Ali's off balance, and Chavez 
Lions trying to take advantage. What a turnaround after Ali. Julio Cesar Chavez. It seems that by 1994, Father Time seemed to finally be catching up with a Mexican warrior. Chavez would be on the wrong end of a controversial draw with Pernell Whitaker before finally suffering his first loss to Frankie Randall after 90 fights. The legacy of Julio Cesar Chavez on Mexican boxing is as indelible as scar tissue. He retires finally in 2005 with a preposterous 107, six and one record. A living legend and a prime example of what modern Mexican style is supposed to look like.